Swain Park School in Essex is an outstanding school that has been commended for their rigorous and innovative strategies for planning. They've adopted a three-tiered iceberg structure that plans for progression from the broad key stage objectives right down to the individual lessons. Catherine McCrory is head of history and shares this new year seven class with a graduate teacher. This will be the third lesson in a sequence of six on why did William win the crown? The lesson plan is in place, but with a very new class, Catherine is prepared to be flexible. Let's see how the plans translate into practice. What's happened is the first lesson I took myself and the second lesson was taken by um, our graduate teacher who's training. I didn't see the lesson, nor did I plan it. His brief was basically to make sure that the children are absolutely solid with the, with the events of the two battles. So today's lesson should be about taking the information that they're secure with and manipulating it into paragraphs. My problem is that's probably not going to happen because the graduate teacher wasn't happy with the lesson. Um, do the students have a secure knowledge of the events? Are they going to be OK with the idea that Saxons means the English, Normans means the French, Vikings means um, Harald Hadrada? So I've got, I've got to try and establish where they are, which normally I would already know, and then somehow take it forward as well in what I want to achieve. Have a seat, please. We're going to start with your sorry little memories with... Oh, who's that? Oh, you. Edward. It's not me. Edward. Edward, Edward, <laughs> Edward the Confessor pops his clogs. <laughs> Event number two, please. Oh. Christian. Um, Harold Godwinson becomes king. Harold Godwinson. Spanish? No, Japanese? English. He's English. He is English. Give us another name for the English. Oh. What could they be called, just to confuse you all? William. Are British? Yeah, you could call them British, but that's not what I'm looking for. Let's go with Anglo-Saxons, please. Oh, yeah. You may oh, see them talked, sure. as, talked about as just being the Saxons. They're the English ones. Got it? Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Harold is expecting a battle in the south. He thinks William is going to come over and invade. What happens instead? In, um, he goes from the bridge bit and... Um, he's not at the bridge yet, he's down side oh, no, waiting and for um, William. He comes, he has the war and then he, he becomes king. <laughs> no, he beats the dude. No, he beats You know what you're happen. doing? Missing a battle up north. He's sitting down there on the south coast. Going, where is William? I want my fight. It's an average ability class. There's going to be a, a wide mix in that class. I haven't identified them yet. The other thing is I, I don't know what they've been taught in the past in terms of their writing ability. It's the first time they've done extended writing. It's the first time I've had a chance to see what they're capable of. So I don't have any frame of reference as to what they've done or what they can do and what, how they are. Are you going to write an essay on this? Oh. No, 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 let's try that again. Are you going to write an essay on this? Hey. Super. The question is, why did William win the Crown of England? What? Yes, we will need to cover that. <laughs> At Swain Park, Andy Samways has been promoting planning methods which help strengthen the teaching and learning of all subjects. One of the things we've been wanting to do as a school is move from shallow learning through to deeper learning. Uh, one of the ways we've done it is through focus staff development and looking at how pupils learning can actually be encouraged on a longer term basis as opposed to just a lesson by lesson. So we started to think about learning like an iceberg, the shallow tip of the iceberg is what we see, where things like information, experience, replication are the things that can be easily achieved in a lesson. We wanted to get it deeper and our staff to really consider the think about knowledge, reflection, application, evaluation and analysis. We then need to think about how to get that into lessons and sequences of lessons at a whole school level. Doing that we really came up with a, a, an aid to start to think, okay, you have an overall aim in terms of where's your aim going to be for a run, of, a run of lessons. The next part of the, the process is actually linking tasks into the objectives. Selecting tasks that are appropriate for different abilities, different objectives, is actually a critical part of the planning. Thinking about different learning styles as we have done in the school and thinking about designing tasks to fit the learning objectives is a tricky business. But staff are very inventive and you can actually use a variety of tasks to meet that same learning objective. Now that you know the stuff that's happened, yeah? Everybody happy? 
Yes. Right? <coughs> Two battles. Sure? Yes. Lovely. Right, what we're going to do then is two things this lesson. I'm going to give you out some cards, right? And then depending on time, we might do something extra. To talk a little bit more about the tasks, um, one of the things that they'll struggle with is the difference between describing the events of the period and actually explaining why something happened. And especially for the bottom ability range, that's going to be incredibly difficult because they think that the aim is to know a lot and if you can say a lot, then, you know, you're going to get your A or you're going to get your level six or whatever, and you're not. And it's instilling in them that that's not what right, we're after. So what I'll do, first of all, is I'll start with addressing that problem. Right. Numbers 1 to 21, you're going to read them through. In pairs, I would like you to decide if you think the card is a reason why William won or it's not a reason why William won. That's your job. Questions? Just Where do you write it? Where do you write it? Easy. If you think it is a reason William won, I would like a tick. Pencil, pen, I don't care. If you think it's not a reason why William won the Battle of Hastings, actually, why William won the Crown of England, I want an X. Now, don't be scoring out the whole sheet. You're going to use these in a minute to do another task. Any questions now? So I'll give them some cards of information. I'll give them ones that are completely um, irrelevant. I'll give them some that are relevant, and then I'll give them cards that are reasons why William won. And the first activity will be to try and, and get across to them. What are we looking for? We're looking for explanation here. That hopefully will lead them to then looking at the ones that they've established as relevant and picking out, well, how would you give me just three reasons? Would it be tactics? Would it be skill? Would it be preparedness? Would it be luck? If they can, I'd like them to come up with those headings themselves without too much prompting from me. And I want you to decide, maybe pick three colours. Any of those cards seem to be about the same thing, seem to be about the same topic. See if you can find three groups of ideas. Does anybody not know what I'm going on about? Excellent, but half the class. OK. <laughs> and I have another problem, um, the mechanics of how I'm going to make it work, because what I've got at the minute is quite a lot of, of information that's on cards. If they cut it out, they can actually manipulate it and they can move it around, which is great for their thinking, but it's wasting time. If I have them assign a colour to a paragraph and then they can colour in those boxes, that's going to save time and yet they're going to have all of these colours mismatched on their page and it's not going to be as easy for them to see. OK, guys, I'm going to stop you for a second and we'll see where we are. Uh, what are our headings so far? Rebecca, give us a heading. Because... He has to keep, like, tactics. Oh, well. well, yeah. Decision-making, leadership, right? The decisions that William made. William made some superb decisions. So if you haven't got it, let's go with Rebecca's tactics or William's skill and make it a colour. I would rather spend the time to have them come up with their own suggestions and come up with their own thinking, even though I can do it. I can give them the information in two minutes. Whereas if I let them come up with it, it might take five. But I think that's time well spent. And so when I, when I plan my activities then, it's about thinking, well, how much time can I afford to wait for them to come up with it? How much do I need to give them to support the lower ability ones to, to push on the higher ability Extra ones? Again, don't colour everything. You don't have to. You're just looking for some example, something you can colour in those three colours. Two more minutes. I tend to have very fast-paced lessons um, because I think, um, I think a lot of people underestimate what they can do. And if you give a certain amount of time, well, they'll take that amount of time and they'll fill it and, and they'll doodle along doing precious little. Anybody stuck? You've got to ask me now. If you set a high pace, the, the problem then becomes you've got, you've got to be really aware of where everyone is because you don't want them feeling disappointed or disillusioned or you certainly don't want them feeling they can't get it. Yes. So that, okay, you got to hear this. Joshua wants to know if William had an army. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you picture it please? We've got oh, 7,000 Englishmen and William. <laughs> Who killed them all with his stunning good looks. Working with a group of staff came up with another visual, really, that helped staff to plan for alternative ways of approaching learning objectives. Once again, with the, the shallow learning might be gathering information. 
what skills do the per pupil need to have and what tools might they actually be needing to do that. Stepping up a level to get into deeper levels of learning, you really need to move into analysis of that information. You're looking at skills such as organising, interpreting and categorising to compare, so staff are able to start to see what skills are needed for that analysis. Linking onto that, what tools could be used, so whether it's card sorts, whether it be mind maps, whether it be Venn diagrams or just maybe sequencing. What it brings at the end is an ability for a member of staff to look at a planned sequence of learning objectives and think, OK, what skills am I also bringing into this learning? So it's not just the content, it's the process as well. So you're planning for content but planning for process as well and really arming the pupils with a range of tools that they can then be using for their own learning. Right, last question. Show of hands, please. Who thinks that William's preparedness was the most important reason he won? Hands up if you think Harold being weak and incredibly unlucky was the most important. You can't change your mind. Yes, you can. Okay, you can change your mind. Who thinks that William's skill and tactics as a leader is the most important? Who's just putting their hand up for everything? <laughs> right, you lovely people, go away. Bye. As head of history, Catherine helps newer teachers develop their short and medium term planning technique. Right, that's the lesson plan that I use today. Um, again, it was scribbling. Extend the first activity of getting the knowledge secure, cut the last activity, and we just didn't go with the weighing. But I did, I did drop it in the plenary by asking them by show of hands to tell me um, which of the three reasons they thought was most important. The difficulty is you can assess their knowledge quite easily. Assessing their skills mm. can take a bit more thought. It's just a matter of sharing ideas and making sure mm. they're available for other people to use because every class is different. Mm -hmm. You can't use one lesson plan for another class, another year mm -hmm. seven class, because they're all so different. Mm -hmm. But so then you might be able to adapt somebody else's resources yeah, for exactly, it. Yeah, exactly, that, yeah. That can sort of spur on your ideas then when, when you've sort of looked at what they're doing that might give you, give you an idea for what you could do with yours. Right, so this, this is going to be their first experience of extended writing. Um, if we look at the, at the overall plan, they will revisit it again for a second time in year seven. Once in year eight and once in year nine, they're going to have a chance to do a causation essay four times in three years, and that's it. So we have to be careful that what we, what we teach them is worth teaching, so and and that it's not repetitive. So we want to to establish for as many of them as possible this time that at least they've got to understand that there's multiple causes that they can group those causes. And I think that has to be the base mark of where we plan for, so that the next time when they get to go over it again, we can see when they write their second essay on Henry and the death of Beckett, we can see if we can take all of those kids from seeing multiple causes and grouping those causes and possibly even doing the headings themselves into proper linking and weighing. So between now and then, we need to think through how we're, how we're really going to teach that, that concept of, of weighing things mm. and arguing one over the other. Because we really need to get our heads around that and how we're going to create some activities to go with it. For the resources and lesson plan featured in this programme, go to the Teachers TV website.